Hey, it's your boy Hill Phantom, and I am back with another mini PC review. This time, I want to thank the folks over at Kamaru for sending over this model, the AK1 Plus. This features an Intel 12th generation N95 processor. This model shipped with 8GB DDR4 RAM. It also includes a 256GB NVMe SSD. It supports up to two 4K HDMI displays at 60Hz each. It does have dual Wi-Fi on board. However, it's not Wi-Fi 6, it's Wi-Fi 5, but it does have Bluetooth 4.2. And oh yeah, one last thing. I told Camaro how rad you guys were, so they gave us an, an exclusive discount code. So make sure you check the description down below if you are in the market for this so that you can save a little bit of money. So just your standard plastic build. We have front IO, and this front IO obviously has a power button there it has two 3.0 usbs next to that it has a single usb 2.0 and on the side we see we can connect our dc wall adapter that ships with it we have an additional 2.0 usb we mentioned these we have two 4k hdmi ports that support up to 60 hertz each so you can easily have a dual display there and both pushing out 4k if you need that next to that you have a gigabit ethernet port and then finally, we have our 3.5 audio slash mic adapter. On the bottom, this is another pretty unique feature. This just lifts out. This actually slides in. So you just simply place this in here, plug it in, and you're good to go. And that is one of the easiest installations of an additional SSD on a mini PC that I have ever seen. You can actually unlock this as well and then you can take this off. And when we take this off, there is also something that's a pretty unique choice as well. There is a USB-C here. So think of this kind of like a external hard drive, uh, you know, USB hub, if you will, that you're gonna just be able to use here. Now that's an interesting choice because it's on the bottom. We don't have any USB-C IO either on the front or on the side. I assume what the attention is, is if you're not going to expand this with an additional hard drive, you can actually use this as a lower profile machine and just set it on your desk there. I will say that as someone who messes with a lot of different operating systems, I think this is gonna be pretty key for me in particular because it's gonna be able to easily get that out and service that. Let's say you have a NAS and something goes wrong, you can easily service it or in my case, as I mentioned, I'm gonna have a different operating system on here and that'll give me the ability to dual boot. Now this does ship with Windows 11 on that SSD that's included, but this will give me the ability to go on the BIOS and select uh, whether I want to boot into Windows and then I'll have Linux on this drive. Now I believe it's time just to go ahead and take a look at what kind of internals we have here. Okay, once we get this all opened, this is pretty unique. You can notice here, one of the things that I was surprised to see is there's actually a SATA port right here. Probably just the case of this being a, a generic motherboard that maybe is in some other models. Now there's a couple other screws that we need to remove to get to the bottom of this to take a look at the RAM and to show you how you could upgrade the M.2 and the RAM. All right, now that we have that off, this is where you can actually access your M2 NVMe if you want, or your RAM, so you could upgrade this as well. So let's get this all together. I'm going to install Linux, uh, and then um, you know we'll mess around with a couple different of those benchmarks. We'll move into the testing phase of this, but this is what it looks like inside. So now that we've gotten all the operating systems installed on the AK1 Plus, I actually went ahead and installed OBS and I'm using it right now to record all of this. So with that, let's get into some of the benchmarks. Up first, we have Cinebench R23. It scored a 2,691 points on the multi-core score and an 856 points on the single core score. To put that in perspective, if we line it up against some other processors, at least in this list, it does fall at the bottom with that 2,691. Only has four cores and four threads. So even though it's the bottom of this list, it's still very much so what I expected. 
Next, we have Geekbench. It scored a 1,053 on the single core, a 2,635 on the multi core. For all you nerds out there that want to see the breakdown of what they test against, now here are some of the variables that they use and run against. Here's just a quick peek. Again, we don't have anything to compare it to here, but I can tell you just from experience that this is well within what I expected out of this. So, yeah, very solid, especially when we look at the fact that we only have eight gigabytes of ddr4 ram okay now on to a very unscientific what i call the everyday driver test now you can see i have this completely pegged at 100 percent 82 percent memory i would say that's pretty well maxed out we have cap cut running we have cinebench we have geekbench running now these aren't running pushing against the cpu they're just open and we have google chrome with 10 tabs open in obs obs and cap cut uh, admittedly they are resource hogs task manager what you're seeing now and then one window explorer a window is open but it's pretty impressive even you know pegged at 81 pretty much pegged 81 percent and 100 percent there on the cpu i'm still able to scrub through this in cap cut so it does hang up a little bit but it's not stuttering it's not doing any of that so that is pretty impressive there. Now let's try to go ahead and push this. Um, let's do a speed test, see if that does anything here. Probably will bump that up a little bit. Yeah, that's up to 100. Okay, now let's really push this thing. Let's see how fast it takes to load YouTube. Uh, still pretty good, I'd say. I would say that's pretty good, especially for being, but now we're 88% and 100. So let's take a look at something that's 4K. We we'll have to get through this ad really quickly and then we can skip it and we will make sure we are in 4K resolution here. Well, we gotta skip the ad first. All right, we are, yes, we are in 4K. Looks good so far in the small window. Yeah, we're even pushing into the 93 percentile for the memory. And let's go full screen, see if we can get this thing to crash. Wow, that's 4K. Now, granted, this is 1080 screen right now, but man, it is pushing out 4K. That's pretty cool, or handling 4K rather. That, that's pretty good. So let's uh, get out of there. Let's see what we can do over here with the scrubbing. Yeah, see, that's where it kind of hangs. It's still keeping up though, considering this has got to be up there now. Yeah, 92, 100. So I think that'll give you a good idea there in terms of what you can do with this. I would say, you know, maybe two or three heavy programs open uh if they're not that heavy maybe four or five ten tabs you know and then yeah i would say that's about your limit so that should give you an idea of what this thing can handle as kind of like an everyday driver so i will admit when i saw the benchmarks i was a little bit concerned but after testing it as an everyday driver i'm rather impressed even when we had that cpu fully maxed out and the memory pretty close to maxed out this thing still performed it didn't lock up and seize so pretty good and pretty impressive not only for the computer but also for the processor so now let's move on to gaming and light emulation now I'm not expecting too much out of this but in lieu of walking you through all of it what I'm going to do is show you a montage of what games and what game systems I was able to get running on this little PC. So as expected, just what I would consider lower end systems are good for emulation for the AK1+. Plus. And if you're looking to play like AAA games, certainly not. AA games, probably not. You know, you're not going to be able to run even like Fortnite on this thing, even if you put it in low settings. So don't anticipate being able to run anything heavy in terms of games on this. 
Now up next, we're going to take a quick look at editing. What I'm going to do again is a quick montage where you can kind of see me put together some stuff. I'm going to test it out. I will be back right before we render it so we can see how long that will take to render this out on this N95 chip with the embedded UHD 710 graphics set. At least in CapCut, uh, editing is pretty good. It didn't hang up, it still scrubs pretty well. You can see I have a couple different transitions in here, a couple different effects. I have a filter, some text that should animate in and out. Again, just some cheesy lightning bolts that come in. Now this is a three minute video, but I wouldn't have this or that much more effects if I was gonna do this on my larger machine as well. So this is a three minute video. Let's see how long this thing takes to render. So that render process turned out just fine. I exported it in 4K and a three minute video was about half a gigabyte of information and that took about six minutes for it to completely export so for a three minute clip that was six minutes so that to give you a good idea of what it would take to export working inside of it was rather easy but i'll leave it up to you whether or not you can be patient enough for the export process Another thing along with having patience is you want to have the right expectation on what this is and what it isn't. And this leads us also into who this is for and who it's not for. Well, I think for the average user, either as a secondary computer or even a primary computer, as long as you're not a super user, you can have a couple different programs open. You can edit, you can certainly stream on this thing. So I think it satisfies a lot of needs as long as you're not one of those power users. Same thing when it goes for kids. Certainly, they're going to be able to do all the things they want on the web. They're going to be able to stream their media. But when it comes to games, if you have a kid that's going to want to play like Fortnite on it, well, it's probably not going to be able to do that. It will probably run Minecraft and 8 bit games, but you might get yourself in trouble if they think they're going to be able to play something like Fortnite on it. But there are a lot of other use cases. For example, on the Linux side, at least for me, I'm going to be using this in my home lab. As compared to a Raspberry Pi, it's a lot more powerful. So I'm going to be able to put Docker on this and put a lot of services in the form of servers and applications on that device and use it within my home lab. Now, the other application I can see myself using this in is on the road in my RV. If you live that RV life or that van life, you know how precious space can be. This has a small footprint and it draws that low power. So if you're not connected to shore power, for example, and you're using battery power, well, this is a really great option as well. Now, there are a few design questions that I have, and one of them is kind of neutral, and the other one is probably a bit on the negative side, and the first one being the fact that they decided to put the secondary I.O., which would normally be the back I.O. on the side. The issue with that is most offices and most spaces that we have laid out are designed to have all that power cord and everything else going out the back, so that could potentially be an issue for some folks. Another design issue that may be positive, it may be negative, depending on how you look at it, is that external drive bay. Because it connects via that USB-C underneath, well, if it's not in use, you can't really get at it. So it would have been better, in my opinion, if they moved that either to the front or side I.O. and develop some type of adapter where we could take that off. This way, we could have the USB-C to use if we're not using that drive bay. But speaking of the drive bay, it's super nice if you're going to do something like a NAS or something like I'm going to do where you're testing out a lot of OSs. I think those design issues are a bit problematic and I would suggest that Kamaru maybe thinks about redesigning it for their next edition. It's definitely on the inexpensive end but it's not made cheaply and the fact that you can remove the RAM and remove the M2 is a huge thing. If you're on the market for some of these cheaper versions of these mini computers just make sure you understand that some of of these things might be on board and you can't upgrade them later but in terms of the performance that's kind of what blew me away with this chip even when i saw this thing running at 100 not only did the processor stand up but the computer itself 
stood up. I didn't have any issues with overheating, nothing like that. And I really can say I highly recommend this. Again, thanks to the folks at Camaro for sending this over. And thanks for giving my audience that discount code down below. So if you're interested, make sure you take advantage of that. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below. And as always, if you wouldn't mind liking and potentially subscribing, I would really appreciate that. I'm Hill Phantom, and I'll catch you next time.